So every gauge comes in a pack, clean and ready to install. And I'm just going to go through this briefly because we do do a two day strain gauge course, the bonding strain gauges. We're going to review it in about five minutes. So let's go through the short process. So the first process is preparing the surface that you're going to bond to. And we want to bond the gauge to the material that we want to measure on, not to some superficial surface. So we're going to abrade back to lace metal. We're going to provide some sort of marking out so we know exactly what position to put the gauge. We're going to follow that with some chemical cleaning. Some materials use an acidic etcher, very mild phosphoric acid. Um, perhaps use a, some sort of degreaser, avoid acetone or degreases that be the residue. And then we make sure that we reach a neutral pH on the surface as well. So if you use an acidic conditioner, you must use a neutralizer, the optimum pH for getting the adhesive bonds to the surface. So that's preparing the surface. Next process is you have a gauge and you want to position it on your alignment marks. First thing is we use a gauge handling tape and we use a high quality mylar that is extremely stretch resistant. So we position it and then we get the adhesive. Depending on type of adhesive, you may need to mix it. If you mix it, uh, most mixed adhesives have a limited pot life, anywhere between 15 minutes and 12 weeks, depending on the specific type of adhesive. And then you would apply it to the gauge and the surface according to the instructions. And some adhesives will require clamping and heat curing. If you're using an instant adhesive, it might be one minute some pressure. If you're using one of the heat cure adhesives, it might be two hours in an oven, for example. Once you've completed that cure process, the next stage is to start attaching lead wires. Now, many gauges come with lead wires already attached, but there is no doubt it's better to bond the gauge first, then solder the leads on. You get much better results. If you use solder, you must clean the flux residue thoroughly, and you would then go on to test the installation. And these three basic tests are essential. We have installed resistance. Have you managed to damage the gauge or have you missoldered it or shorted it out? You have the insulation resistance. The gauge should be isolated from the surface. And these two tests, we use our little model 1300 gauge insulation tester. These buttons here actually are in percentage deviation. Zero return, you can use a strain indicator, something like our P3 or other instrument. And that enables you to apply a small load and make sure the strain gauge returned to zero. This is assuming the structure they're bonded to returns to zero. If you're happy at this stage, you can go ahead and provide some protective coating to make sure that insulation is protected from the environment that it's going to be in. And of course, you should then retest the installation the same way as we just did to make sure you didn't damage the gauge during applying the protective coating.